The Stoner Rifle or SR-25 was designed by legendary weapons designer Eugene Stoner and produced by Reed Knight of Knight's Armament. The concept for the SR-25 was loosely based off of Stoner's AR-10. Being chambered in 762 by 51 the gun is a DMR workhorse, which first was adopted and deployed by the US Navy SEALs in the 90s during operations in Somalia. In the entertainment world, it was featured in TV and movies such as Survivor, American Sniper, Captain Phillips, Zombie Diary Suit, The Losers, Future Weapons, Ultimate Weapons, Deadliest Warriors, and Castle. Oh, I think you guys get the point. Now, for many years, the Airsoft community has waited patiently for a high quality GBBR version of this gun. Now, let's see if the VFC SR25 GBBR lives up to the gold standard set by its real steel counterpart. Here it is guys, the SR25 GBBR by VFC. This is the DX version, meaning it's going to come with the bipod and the mock suppressor. But one of the most attractive features of this gun is that it's officially licensed by Knight's Armament. So you're going to find all the correct markings on both the upper and lower receiver. Now let's get right into it. There's a lot to talk about with this gun here. Starting from the silhouette of this gun. It is in the iconic M16 shape. It's instantly recognizable, much like what you would expect from a classic Porsche or Ferrari. There's something about this shape that inspires a sense of imagination and a lot of emotion. Now starting at the front of the gun, what you're gonna find is the suppressor that you can take off by lifting this tab here. It includes all the correct markings as what you'd expect from a fully licensed gun. Underneath the suppressor is the outer barrel, which houses a 485 millimeter inner barrel that is 6.03 in diameter, so you're gonna get great accuracy down range. From there, you have a flip up front sight and a regular rail system that has rails on the top, sides, and bottoms. Being the DX version, comes with the bipod as well. From there, you're gonna find the hop up adjuster, which is actually patented by VFC. Now, if you look closely, the gas tube is what's used to adjust the hop up actually. As you can see the little hole over there, if you can take a slim enough tool to stick it in, push forward or backwards for more or less hop. This is a much more convenient system than previous VFC hop up adjustment systems and I'm so glad that they have put it there. Now moving to the middle portion of this gun is the upper and lower receiver. Now this bears striking resemblance to regular AR pattern rifle receivers with three minor differences. Difference number one, this is a much bigger mag well than what you would see on an M4, M16. Difference number two is that this gun is a safe and semi-automatic fire gun only. No full auto on this gun, sorry guys. And the final difference is this gun does not feature a forward assist, like what you would see on other AR pattern rifle receivers. From there, then you find the silver bolt, which is just like what you would expect on the real firearm. Now this bolt is slightly larger than what you would see on regular M4s or M16 again and when we take it down, I'll show you the bolt in comparison to a regular M4 bolt. After the bolt is the T-shaped charging handle and the large M16 style buttstock. You can take it and open the door here. Now let's get to disassembling the gun. Let me move this out of the way so I don't bump it. We're gonna first remove the magazine, and then we're gonna remove the pin here in the rear, then the pin in the front. Make sure you bring a few tools with you. So I'm gonna have my trusty cloth and my hammer. Yep, they are pretty stiff. We come back over, give it a little pull, and then remove the lower receiver, like that. Your trigger housing for you to lube it and clean it. Removing the bolt is simple as pulling the charging handle back and pulling the bolt out. Here's where you remove the charging handle. That aside, here is your large bolt and your upper receiver. We talked about earlier, I want to show you a bolt comparison between the SR25 and a regular M4. So you have the SR25 bolt right here and a regular M4 bolt here. Look at the size difference between those two. This is from my personal M4, which so happens to also be a VFC. And this is the SR25. 
Now the part where I have personally been waiting for the most, the recoil, shooting, and trigger test. Like all GBBRs, you're gonna get a bit of recoil with this gun, so let's see how hard the SR25 kicks. That is very strong recoil. It comes straight back and it just hits you in the shoulder. Not to mention, it's really loud. My ears are actually ringing from this gun. I uh, wish I had a little bit of ear pro. Very nice. Now I'm gonna let the camera pan around and see how much the recoil affects my body. Trigger pull itself, not as heavy as the SCAR. Definitely a faster shooting gun. Now to the gas efficiency test, because what GBBR rifle doesn't deserve one? Just like the SCAR H, I filled this magazine here completely full with gas, and let's see how many mags we can shoot until either it gets too cold where it can't function, or the gas is all ran out. Sorry, I forgot to mention guys, the magazine holds 24 rounds. One, two, around two and a half full magazines and it's starting to ice up and I don't know if you can see it but it is smoking a little bit in my hands not bad actually not as good as the scar but not bad all right let's get to chronoing the gun I'm using green gas and 0.2 gram BBs I took off the suppressor so we can get a better reading And the gun shoots at an average of 350 FPS. If the gun shoots a little hot for some of you guys, don't worry. I'm sure VFC is going to have a version ready for your country's legal FPS limits. Here we are back at the warehouse again, 30 meters away, 98 feet. I'm sure you guys know by now. We're going to shoot the SR25 and today to help me, I'm going to be using the prototype RWA scope that is 4 to 16 by 50. This is a very high powered optic. So let's see how accurate this gun is going to be. I'm also going to be using these bipod on this stand right here. This gun has extremely strong recoil, so you're gonna make sure you do a little bit of recoil management on this gun. The trigger is also very, very crisp on the pull, and really short. If you come a little closer, you'll see from my next shot. Not only is this trigger short stroked, but it's a little bit lighter as well. And it's really not that heavy, like I said. Your follow-up shots are gonna be much faster with this gun. That was a really exciting gun to shoot. And look at this group. This is probably one of the best groups I've ever shot with any gun out of the box. This is about an inch to an inch and a half with one flyer up top. And I'm pretty sure with a little bit more hop-up adjustment, you're going to get a deadly accurate gun. I would have wished maybe I had some heavier BBs and a little bit longer range, but man, that speaks a lot for this gun coming right out of the box. This gun is a beast. 
It performed extremely well, but there are a few takeaways that I do want to share with you guys. First things first, and make no mistake, this is a very heavy gun. And that's before mounting this very heavy scope on top of it. So lugging this gun around all day is going to be one heck of a workout. Number two, this M16 style buttstock, while I very much enjoy it, I'm sure it's not going to be for everybody. Nowadays, you're going to find guns with collapsible stocks and different lengths of pull to facilitate how you like to run. I'm sure this is going to be a little bit limited for some other players out there. But in all honesty, I think I'm just being a little nitpicky about this gun because those factors really don't take away from how awesome and great this gun really is. I've also done several comparisons between this gun and the SCAR H. If you want to watch my SCAR H review, feel free to click right here on the screen. Hi guys, the wait is over. The fully licensed FN SCAR H by Cybergun. We set out to find if the VFC SR25 GBBR is the gold standard battle rifle. And the answer is sadly it's not. Due to its long length and relatively heavy weight, this gun is going to see only limited rolls on the airsoft field, sadly. But if you're looking for a gun that's deadly accurate and really excels in that, I don't see any other gun rivaling this one coming right out of the box. If you're also a serious gun collector, why not? It's the SR25. So for this cool gun and many, many more, don't forget to check us out at www.redwolfairsoft.com. I've been Mark, aka Blue Steel, and I'll see you guys on the next episode of Red Wolf TV. Have a good one, guys.